What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Here at the Bicycle Casino right now, first time going to be playing there. Live at the bike, we have a very, very fun lineup today. It's gonna be 25-25, uh, uncapped game. I bought it for 30,000, that's all I have with me. So we'll see how that goes. And um, yeah, gonna hop in there. It's supposed to be a very fun lineup. Like I said, second day of this LA trip. Uh, Hustler went all right, as you guys saw from the last video, and hopefully uh, time to spin it up today. Try to find some run good. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the stream. Should be a very fun time. Leave a like, because these high stakes cash games are always a blast. And uh, I'm sure this lineup is going to be no exception. So let's hop in there and try to win. Before getting into the hands, I want to give a big thank you to Nemo for the invite. She put the game together, and before the game started, I was told it was a very friendly 25-25 game. So I buy in for $30,000, and from the title, you can see things get off the rails. Let's get started here in the first hand. It's a $75 bomb pot. We're playing Hold'em and two boards. Flop one comes ace-jack nine. Flop two comes king-queen seven. Gazi on my right bets out $175. And looking at my hand here, I actually have top two pair with king-queen on the bottom board. Along with a gutter on the top, I'm definitely not going away. I make the call and this opponent on the table named Julio, someone you will be very familiar with at the end of this video, he actually raises to $475. Gazi makes the call, I make the call, of course, I'm never folding. Drawing to the nuts up top as well, let's go and see a turn with the pot building. Turn one comes the three of diamonds, followed by the eight of diamonds. And here on this card, Julio decides to bet out $500. Gazi makes the call for $500, and once again, it's a pretty small bet into the pot right now. Obviously, I'm never folding, so let's see some rivers. River one comes at the eight of clubs, and river two is actually the queen of diamonds. Pretty sick to have the nuts now, the nut full house on the bottom board. Yes, you can say I lose to pocket kings, but there's only one combo of that. Anyways, I can potentially have a chance to win this entire pot outright by potentially getting folds or maybe squeezing some players out. Anyways, let's see what happens when Julio starts off with a bet of $500 again. Pretty small bet, kind of confused to what's going on. Gazi now makes the call for 500 and uh, yeah, I'm not going to be calling because I am either have the option to jam all in to force folds or the second option is to raise small and hope to get both players to call and I end up chopping up some of the dead money. And I actually opted for the latter option and go for that. I decided to raise it up to $2,000. Didn't want to go completely nuts and shove, made it somewhat reasonable that looks like value and small enough that maybe I can get both of them to call. But Julio ends up folding and Gazi looks like he's in a rough spot and he ends up tank calling with an ace. I guess he makes a pretty good call as now we are chopping and um, yeah, this first pot, at least I didn't lose any money. This next hand starts with Gazi in plus one, raising it up to $100. I'm next to act in plus two and with ace eight suited. I think my hand would prefer to raise versus a call. Of course, I can fold as well, but definitely don't want to do that in this game. So I'm going to go for a three bet and raise to $400 as we're playing a little deep. Action folds around to Julio on the button. He's getting involved. It makes the call for 400. This allows Thalo in the big blind to call and Gazi called as well. So multi-way to a flop we go of ace, eight, seven, two diamonds. Pretty sick flop with the top two pair. Usually on board textures like this and multi-way, I definitely would prefer to check a lot of the time. And this is something that I'm gonna do here in this spot. I check, not gonna do anything different. Unfortunately, no one bites the trap and action checks around. Turn now comes the king of diamonds. So flush draw does get there, but when the action checks to me again, definitely think I wanna put some money in the middle. I can't be afraid of a flush, especially when I have such a good hand of two pair. So I bet out $1,300, about the size of the pot now, just trying to charge some, I guess, draws and stuff that I beat. For $1,300, I get one player to make the call, Thalo here, with about less than pot behind on the river. Now let's go to a river which comes a six. Thalo checks for a third time, and this actually feels like a bit of a tricky spot in my situation. When you can see the cards, you know, on the graphics, of course, it looks like a very easy shove, but 
The thing is, I actually don't expect Dallo to really have many one pairs that often of aces that I can get value from. Considering he called a 3-bet from out of position, it contains a lot of suited cards, which obviously could be flushes now at this point, or he can have pocket pairs, which are now sets. I don't think he's getting out of line with a hand like King-8 in his range, so, and I would also expect a hand like 8-7 to check-raise or lead on some turns. So what do I even beat? I beat one pair of aces, which is pretty hard to have when I have an ace myself, so I use my full 30 second time bank before just going for the trigger. I, I, I'm, I'm just going for it. I don't know what I beat to be honest, but I'm just gonna jam. I put them all in and he does end up making the call rather quickly. And when he calls, you can see I don't look thrilled, but I do see the good news. Ace eight is going to win as he mucks his cards. I guess I'm just glad it all worked out. All that thinking on the river just led to, don't be an idiot, Ethan, you have two pair, just go all in and win some money. In the following spots now, I pick up a premium, pocket queens from plus one, and uh, something that I've studied from my intensive time in the lab is that pocket pairs like these, you, you don't want to fold usually. So with some newfound studying, I decided to raise it up to $125, five up to my left makes the call, and I see some very fun development. When the accountant raises to $500, Julio makes the call on the button for 500, and I'm thinking things over here. I am out of position. I don't really want my hand to go multi-way, especially out of position. So certainly incentivized to put in the four bets. I raised it up again to $1,500. In action, quickly folds around to Julio, and he ends up making the call. Maybe he's a Bach player because uh, he loves his natural nines, it seems like. So we're gonna go to a flop against a, a rather active player at the table. And the flop is not a bad one, 10, six, deuce, two diamonds. Nice to have an over pair, nice to have a diamond in my hand. I bet out first to act for 1,200. For 1,200, my opponent is not deterred. He doesn't care, he makes the call. Turn now comes the eight of diamonds, and I have some mixed feelings between betting or checking in this spot. Having played with them for the past two hours now, I definitely lean towards a check. I think my opponent is capable of bluffing for sure, and I have a really easy candidate to call down with the diamonds. So yeah, maybe he can bluff, but he does not take the bait, he checks it back. River now comes a king, so a card over my pair, don't really love it, but as played, I'm just gonna check, and if he bets, I'll have to call for sure. But action goes check, check here. I'll show my hand and win. I never got to see his card real time, but as you can see now on screen, he is playing any two. At this point in the night, you can hear Gazi announce the start of the stand up game. And uh, we are about to go, and they are gonna start the stand up game. <laughs> now you're standing up, you know. Stand the fuck up, let's go! Sit, sit back down, it's the bomb pump first. And throughout this game, Julio, the person playing about 90% of hands, has been complaining about the lack of action. And he ends up asking anyone at the table to do a prop bet during this stand-up game. No one agrees to it, so of course, I will chime in and gamble. We agree to a $1,000 side bet, and any time one of us wins a pot, we pay each other $1,000 during this game. So for example, let's skip here to this point of the night. Julio wins a pot. And you can see I'm going to give him a yellow chip as he wins our side bet. Granted, in hindsight, this might be a pretty tough bet to play and win because it's against someone who is fearless and going to be playing any two cards very, very hard. As you can see, after winning, Julio wants more blood. He's just paid Julio $1,000 because Julio sits down first. But they're now playing so that every time Ethan wins a pot, Julio pays him 1K. And every time Julio wins a pot, Ethan chucks him 1K. Which is pretty crazy for a 25 25 Oh, you sit down already. Julio's still the, uh, the big spender of the game. Down. But we still have a bet. So next However, person wins the winning pot. the BPIP charts at 86%, that's and that's what really matters. So this is the best good for him. That's exactly what matters. Yeah. Right. I am losing so much. Great. Right. <laughs> interesting that this is... So, we agree to run the bet back. In this next hand, you'll see another time Julio. Surprise, surprise, he wins another pot. I ship him another yellow chip. For those counting at home, yes, that is now $2,000 down the drain in these random degenerate side bet pots. Okay, that's $2,000 down the drain, and we run it back. In the next hand... 
What a surprise, another yellow chip off of my stack. Yes, I am getting drained now. And then for the fourth hand, a few minutes later, Julio three bets the 8-5 offsuit to $4,400. Welcome to this game and he wins it. For those who lost track on counting, that is the fourth yellow chip I've given him. And the final one, I have not won one, by the way. I'm not just showing highly to him winning. I just haven't won this side pot yet or this little side prop bet. Anyways, when I give him the fourth chip, I tell him, deal's off, man. You've wiped me clean. You've hit my threshold. And uh, when I cancel the side bet, he isn't super happy about it, but I offer something else instead as a solution. I suggest a $1,000 straddle the next time we're able to do it. So we trade 1K straddles, and this is the backstory to the insane hand that leads up to this one. I see pocket tens on the button. How insane is that? I swear I didn't fix this, but the timing is uncanny. Anyways, action folds to me, and I raise it preflop to $2,600 because that's what you do when there's a $1,000 straddle on. Also, a note about the graphics, I only have about 37,000 in my stack, not the full 50,000. Graphics might be a tad wrong after some ridiculous side bets and loaning money to other players. Anyways, I definitely don't have $50,000 in my stack, sadly, but when I raise up to 2,600, action falls to Julio, and as expected, he is just not going to be afraid to battle. He makes the call here, and the pot is inflated, and also, we don't have the 1K side bet on this hand. So um, that bet is off because of this straddle. We're going to a flop of 863 to hearts. Very, very clean flop with an overpair. And when Julio checks, I'm gonna bet out $3,400 and pause. You can hear Julio in the audio announce two magical words. Let's play it. Otherwise, what's the point of like? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and exactly. was this uh, yeah, Julio's yeah, straddle? Exactly. Julio has just it's moved all in. Cares. Rampage snap calls? Rampage snaps. And within half a second, snap, 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 we are all of a sudden playing a $75,000 pot in a matter of mere seconds, not a $100,000 pot that's on the graphics. Unfortunately, I only had about $35,000 facing this all in, but uh, yeah. Versus Julio, got to assume an overpair is ahead here. There's real no need to think. And if my opponent has a beat here, then so be it. I will certainly take my chances. And let's sweat this one out. This will 100% by far be the biggest pot we'll ever play on the entire stream as no one else on the table nearly has as much chips as us two. Sweat out a run out, let's go. No, is this a real hand? Whoa. The table is silent. And Rampage re sucks out. Re River, oh my god, what a run out! The run out comes and Julio actually never tables his hand. So I never actually knew real time what he had, but he's not happy because it turns out he sucked out on the turn and then I re sucked out on the river. Such a sick spot to be in and I'm just glad I won because look, if I lost this one, if he sucked out on the turn with a nine and then the river was a brick, then I don't have any more opportunity to buy back into this game. But just like that, a $75,000 pot gets shipped my way. I'm so glad that this one held, and I'm glad I can share the backstory of how this specific spot got so insane. So that was one half of the $1,000 straddle bet. Anyways, this time in this hand, it's my turn to straddle for 1,000, and now Julio is on the button himself, Action folds around to Julio after our massive pot, and he decides to just shove for $30,000. Oh man, action is insane on this table, and well, action's gonna fold to me. I actually looked down a very pretty one, Jack Nine of Diamonds. In the moment, you know, I obviously don't think I can call a $30,000 shove with Jack High. Um, it is pretty, but you know, it's hard to play at pre-flop. Anyways, looking back now after seeing the graphics, I wish I just didn't gambled hard with my jack high versus his 10 high. But alas, that didn't happen, but welcome to the game, everyone. This is what we've got going on here today. What's insane is the very next deal after my straddle, more insane action happened. I'm on the normal $100 straddle this time. Julio starts with a raise of a casual $1,000 as one does. Action onto Craig on the button, he makes the call. And now Lynn on the $50 straddle shoves. It's a tad under $5,000. 
And when I'm not on the straddle, I peel a premium of ace, queen of hearts. What to do, what to do. I am certainly never going to fold, that's for sure. We are crossing that one off the list. And given how there's two more players to act behind me, there's definitely merit and incentive to squeeze. But in this specific situation, I think it makes more sense to just make the call, allow my other opponents to come in from behind, or allow them to get crazy because ace queen is just a go hand at this point of the night. Anyways, under normal circumstances, like I said, I would probably ISO, but not today. I make the call of Lin's shove. And like I said, this allows the other two players in position to call as well, which is what they do. It's action packed here and let's see a flop. Almost $20,000 in the middle, four ways to a flop we go of 10, eight, seven. Sadly, nothing here for ace queen. I have nothing, I check. Julio announces all in. What an amazing spectacle of poker action here today, everyone. Julio putting on a clinic. Craig, though, is put into a pretty tough spot with his pocket nines, which after a long tank, he ends up making the call, which is nasty. I'll fold the ace queen. I have nothing here. And let's just see what happens in a massive pot here. The runout comes and Craig ends up improving to a straight and wins the whole damn thing. The main, the side pot, all the chips in the middle. It's all yours, Craig. Nice hand to him who ended up crushing today on the stream. And that's the last interesting hand of the night. I mean, what more interesting can you get? But post stream, we ended up playing for a little bit more and I have one fun hand to get after, but let's look at some chip porn because I have piles and piles of chips in front of me. But here, after the stream, I pick up pocket nines on the big blind. We're playing six handed at this point and we're playing 5,100. The low jack opens up the action to 300. The cutoff three bets to $900, both playing very, very deep. Certainly don't love my situation here, but I'm here to play hands against these opponents, so I'm not gonna muck the nines for now. I just make the call here for 900, the low jack folds. We're off to a flop of five, six, seven to hearts. Pretty great flop for nines, all things considered. I check it over to my opponent and he bets out 1200. Definitely mixed feelings. Maybe I could three bet, maybe I can call, but uh, given this sizing, happy to just make the call here. Turn comes in ace, which is no bueno for me. Action goes check check though, so gotta love that. At least he's not gonna bet this ace. The river comes another five. And I check it over once again, just trying to get the showdown now with the nines, but my opponent decides to bet 2,000. Uh, yeah, I mean, clearly he's capable of bluffing and playing some really weird hands. And I guess my opponent has earned the reputation for being able to bluff. I make the call for 2000 and he has ace king. No bluff here, sir. Just a, just a good hand. I lose a few thousand, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that was the only interesting hand post stream. We rack up, call it a night and count out the winnings. All right, here's the setup. Um, chips, count of how much money I made. What a sick session. Oh my God. I don't know what the hell. I played for seven hours and uh, that big pot, 75K pot is, is basically off to talk about. Probably the one of the most fun sessions I've ever had. I mean, everyone was drinking, having a good time, laughing, and obviously winning a big pot helps a lot as well. Re-sucking out on the river, needed it so bad. I don't even know what to say. Um, so the profit isn't as high as uh, it could have been because the action was so crazy, variance was so high. I mean, I lost $5,000 with the ace queen of, of, of hearts preflop. I mean, it's just a good hand. I'm, I'm gonna call. I have to, right? Yeah, so anyways, I was in the game for $36,700. That was all, all the cash I had. Um, really bit me in the ass in the big hand because I was tr desperately trying to find more money. Um, and obviously, if, if I had more money on my stack, then I would have made more. Whatever, I'm not gonna complain, but I wish I had more money on me. Um, anyways, I was out of the game for $62,935, so it's a good win of $26,223, um, which is a very good win. Like I said, could have been bigger. I mean, uh, off stream, played a few pots, lost a couple thousand, and uh, that ace-queen hand lost 5,000 right there, so that's like minus 10k in what could have been potentially more profit. Um, but swinging game, big game, fun game. So 
I'm glad I got invited here. Shout out to uh, Wayne for hitting me up. Shout out to Nemo for inviting me to this one. It was a lot of fun. The action was more insane than I ever could imagine. I literally thought this was going to be a small game. And sometimes crazy shit happens. But thanks so much for sticking to the end. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Nice to book a dub. I will see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you guys. Peace.